Well, very good. Welcome everyone to our Senior Issues Group Workshop. Uh, this is the first one for the year of 2021. Um, we are looking forward to this session. You know, as as uh, Justine mentioned earlier, that we, we usually have this this meeting as a face to face meeting. Uh, I think we do it like once a quarter, uh, but of course, because of the pandemic, we're doing virtual. Which I think everyone now is kind of uh, familiar and is uh, you know just no Zoom is normal now. Zoom is the new normal. Um, probably won't go away. We'll probably continue to do Zoom as um, as we go throughout the year, but hopefully uh, things are starting to open up and uh, hopefully we'll be able to conduct uh, our next session, if not maybe the third session, uh, one of our sessions this year in person, we have to resume back to in-person meetings. So I know everyone is looking forward to that. So again, thank you all for coming. Um, we have to acknowledge uh, our, our sponsors. Of course, I want to thank Tina at the top for spearheading this, but none of this can be possible without our sponsors. Uh, the sponsors for the Senior Issues Group are, are AARP, who was the featured speakers today, as well as uh, the Better Business Bureau and Upstate Home Care Solutions. So again, thank you to all of our sponsors who uh, have made it possible for us to come together and to talk about some of these issues that are affecting our seniors and not throughout our community. Today, we have a great agenda for you today. Um, in the past, our, our workshop or our group have talked about, we focus of course on senior issues and we've talked about transportation and meals, but we felt that we felt it to uh, really do a deep dive and focus on home care. And so we have, uh, we have AARP here today that's gonna to talk about their Home Fit Guide program. And so I will, um, Turn it over now to, to V so she can introduce today's speakers, but just one bit for housekeeping. If you have any questions, if you can put those in the chat, um, if you know how to do that. If not, if you know how to raise your hand, we'll, we'll, I'm sure Justine will be quick on the trigger to uh, um, answer your questions or to acknowledge you as well as to um, monitor the questions in the chat. So if there's nothing else to draw my attention, now we're turning over to V where she would introduce our speakers for today. Thanks, James. And I'm looking forward to introducing the speakers. Um, you know, both of the speakers, as Jane mentioned, are with AARP, and they've been very helpful with 10 at the top with um, helping us, to, um, you know, with topics that will be def definitely a, a good asset for those in the senior professional world or with our um, seniors. And it, um, that's hopefully what's on the actually call today and the participants. So I wanted to introduce Lorraine Simmons. Lorraine joined AARP South Carolina in 2016 as a legislative, legislative advocacy volunteer. Over the years, she's taken on more responsibility and now serves on the AARP state volunteer lead for um, livable communities work. She also serves on communities addressing multicultural outreach and fraud prevention. And Lorraine's professional and career includes marketing and medical sales and several years in, with the U.S. Postal Service and experience as an entrepreneur. She's been very busy. She brings to AARP her personal experience of caring for her grandfather and hopes to provide resources and education that can help others overcome some of the challenges she faced. However, her involvement in the community is not in there. Lorraine is active member of the Columbia branch of the NAACP and the, F and the VFW Auxiliary Post 4262. She's also an ombudsman with the Central Mid Midlands Council of Governments and her commitment to her community and passion for services are evident to all who know her. So we're very excited about um, Lorraine, listening to Lorraine today to talk about the update of, of being able for seniors to stay in their home. But I also want to um, introduce Cherie. Cherie is actually going to be running the most important part and she's gonna be running the PowerPoint for Lorraine. And so Lorraine, Lorraine or excuse me, Cherie is currently serves as the AARP South Carolina's Associate State Director, the community outreach. In this role, she oversees strategies for community-based engagement and advocacy, livable community initiatives and volunteer engagement. She has 20 years experience in marketing, strategic partnerships and providing develop and, and program development with a focus on public health and education. 
Most recently, Sharif served as the public of the director of public outreach at the South Carolina Department of Health Environmental Control, and which is formerly known as the DHEC, where she oversees the agency's marketing and stakeholder stakeholder engagement strategy. Her previous roles also work as a marketing director for public charter schools, a grant writer for one of the state's largest community health centers, and last but not least, a community organization for the nonprofit, which she does. And so, as you can tell, these ladies are busy, and um, they and I am so excited because. They um, have helped us along the way here at the BBB with senior issues and I'm excited to introduce Lorraine Timmons as our speaker today. Thank you so much V for your introduction. Um, thank you to AARP and 10 at the top for today's presentation and the honor of being your presenter. So again, thank you for having me. Cherie, we can start the uh, presentation now, I believe. Okay, I am just giving me one second, get my slides together. Okay, home fit, making home safe and livable for all. This presentation is intended to enable people to create a lifelong home suitable for themselves mm -hmm. and others in their household, no matter the person's age or life stage. I will be using the Home Fit Guide to provide some additional tips and advice along with the presentation. Today, I will be talking to you about how to make your home home fit. One way to make a home more livable for people of all ages is to incorporate design principles and products that are adaptable, safe, and easy to use. Such smartly designed features are also very attractive, stylish, and come at all price points. This AARP workshop will show you how that's possible with the Room by Room Home Fit Tour. But please take note of the slides with the green stars. These are, items are considered a quick fix. By the end of the training, participants are urged to type in the chat select one or two quick fixes that they plan to implement in the, in the near future. And there will be a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is our agenda. And the workshop will talk about the perks of making your home fit, universal design, and the home tour, making your home fit. But I wanna ask, what if all homes could be suitable for anyone, regardless of a person's age or physical ability? What if persons who want to live independently, regardless of his or her age or physical ability, could do just that? Well, let's get started. Next slide, please. Workshop ob objectives. Participants in today's presentation will be able to, one, recognize how a home can be modified to support changing needs and lifestyle at any age. Two, determine which modifications are important for maintaining the lifestyle that they desire. And three, distinguish between modifications that are DIY and those that are best left to a professional. Next slide, please. Home sweet home. What's the first thing that, you, that comes to mind when you hear the word home? And what does home mean to you? What home should be is sufficient, available, and affordable. It should be in areas that are safe and with greater senior needs in mind. Comfortable living in place requires bath and bed access and modifications, easy access walkways, emergency response, adequate lighting, safe doorknob and doorknob handles, stairways, and of course, broadband accessibility. But home is the personal touches that we make to change the house into a sweet home. It's also our memories, the feeling of comfort, family photos, good times, and a place to feel calm and secure. We can help individuals and families make their current or future residents age-friendly. 
In addition, elected officials, policymakers, and local leaders can learn about and advocate for the type of housing features and designs that communities need so their residents can live safely and comfortably and thrive. Next slide, please. The cost of not staying in your home can include private duty home health aids, adult daycare outside of the home, assisted living facilities, and nursing homes with semi-private and private rooms. So that could be kind of considerable if you think about it. The modifications that we present today will vary in cost and difficulty level. However, when you consider the cost per month, we think you will see that many of these changes are much more economical and the work done to remain in your home are worth the effort. And some monthly cost examples for Greenville, South Carolina are uh, in-home care range from 4,000 and up. Assisted living facilities range from 2,800 and up. Nursing home facilities for semi-private rooms range from $7,730 and private rooms from $8,608. So that could be kind of costly, especially if you're um, a senior and you're on, um, uh, you're on a fixed income. Next slide, please. Universal design accommodating all people, all abilities, refers to a simple concept. Universal design is an approach to designing products and environments to accommodate all people, including those with physical, cognitive, or sensory impairments. It, along with the livability and visitability, is the basis for the Home Fit Guide and today's presentation. Next slide, please. So looking at this picture, what's your initial reaction to this image? And this is a rhetorical question, but just looking at that, what do you think of when you see this image? And how does the design of this space create access issues? How would it create access issues for you? Next slide, please. The exterior, ensuring access for all. Next slide, please. The exterior zero step entrances talks about modifications to existing entrances that can take many forms and the goals are of course safety and practicality. Whether a residence is a house or an apartment, its exterior doorways should allow a smooth transition into and out of the property. Many homes have entrance steps which can make the home inaccessible to a person who uses a wheelchair relies on crutches, or has difficulty climbing stairs. All homes should have at least one zero-step, no-trip exterior doorway. If not at the front door, maybe a side door, a back door, or even a door located in a garage can be a substitute. Next slide, please. The exterior step and walker steps which are steps that can be an individual, like a stoop, or a set of steps leading to an entryway. Or you can have walker steps that are modified to have deep treads and short risers. Next slide, please. The exterior, ramps. And here they show pictures of what a permanent ramp looks like, a temporary ramp, and a threshold ramp, which is basically kind of flat, but just a little bit elevated. And when a zero step entryway cannot be achieved, a ramp can be added. Ramps can be a permanent or temporary fixture to a home. Entrances both inside and out should be well lit and free of clutter. There should be handrails on both sides of all steps and stairways. Next slide, please. The exterior vertical lift platforms are ideal for limited space, but must be installed by a professional. If you have a small front yard or limited outdoor space, you may not think there is a way to modify your home so that all people can access it. However, a vertical platform lift is another option for those with limited space or options. Ramps and vertical lifts 
need to be installed again by a professional. Next slide, please. The exterior, lighting and address numbers. And as you note in this slide, there are some green stars, which are dedicated to notes, um, quick fixes. So um, this slide talks about outdoor lighting, entryway lighting, solar powered pathway lighting, and there are tips for displaying address numbers. It is important to prominently display the visibility of the address numbers so emergency responders and delivery persons can locate the home. Illuminated numbers or numbers made of a shiny, reflective, or glow-in-the-dark material are the best visible at night. So this is a quick fix. You'll want to make sure at least one entryway light is at a height that does not require someone to be on a ladder to change the bulb or to make or make you know make maintenance doable by anyone that you know can do it. You should also consider adding pathway lighting that leads to the front entryway that will allow visitors and delivery people to safely approach the home after dark. This is another quick fix. Other suggestions include outdoor lighting fixtures with automatic lights that go on and off at dusk and dawn and or motion detection um, lights. Entrance doors have a peephole or security technology so you can see who's outside. Next slide, please. Sm the smart home, using technology to improve lifestyle. So let's talk about inside possibilities. Imagine being able to adjust your thermostat, turn on your favorite radio station, or even add something um, to your shopping list without having to leave your favorite chair. Well, thanks to advances in smart home technology, all of these are now possible and easier to set up than you might imagine. The use of uh, smart home technology can greatly improve the functionality and safety of a home-based automation system and products like your Google Home or your Alexa, Quip Amazon, or Echo Smart Speakers, for example, are able to provide real-time information and perform home-based tasks with little more than an internet connection and a voice command. Next slide, please. The smart home pulp. Do you currently have any smart home features in your home? Do you feel, how do you feel about adding smart home features to your phone? Well, I for one have an Alexa and I'm not real, real proficient with it, but I do use it to play music. I tell her what I wanna hear and um, I use her to um, tell me what the weather is and um, I use her to remind me about my Bible study on Sunday morning. But one of the greater things that I use her for is she's tied to my security system. So when somebody's at the door, she tells me loud and clear, somebody's at your side door. So if you don't have one, this may be something that you could consider that would help you feel safe in your home. I know it makes me feel safe. Next slide, please. Smart home, the virtual assistant, a virtual home assistant can turn the TV on and off, can dial into video calls and online meetings, play music and podcasts, control lights and appliances, do online research. Um, they can adjust the thermostat, lock and unlock the doors, make shopping lists, place phone calls, and provide reminders. Um, next slide, please. So um, the smart home lighting and electrical, this is also a slide that has some green stars on it. So you can, um, these are quick fixes for like your smart home options and your light timers um, for motion activation and also for light bulb choices. As mentioned on the previous slide, you can connect your lights to your virtual home assistant so that at, you can turn them on and off with a voice command. Additionally, you can connect table lamps or other lighting fixtures to an automatic timer, to your virtual home assistant or to a motion activated system to follow for easy activation. This can be a quick fix. This also ensures that lights are turned on and off at set times and that your home appears occupied. 
even when it's not. It should be noted that not all light bulbs are equal. They come in a range of shapes, sizes, and brightness levels. Choosing the right bulb can make a home safer and a space more useful and enjoyable. Refer to the home guide, page 15, for more information on choosing the correct light bulb for your application. And this could also be a quick fix. Next slide, please. The entryway doors, entering and exiting your home safely. Let's move on to discuss ideas for entryways. Whether a residence is a house or apartment, its exterior doors should allow a smooth transition into and out of the property. Safety is of the utmost importance. You can add a secure slide latch or chain inside so you can speak to someone outside without fully unlocking your door and or use a peephole. You could even consider adding an attractive grab bar at each of your entrances. The last thing you ever want to do is fall. Next slide, please. The entryway doors. Specifications for universally designed doors, swing clear hinges, another option for providing more clearance in a doorway. Next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can you go back to the other one? Thank you, sorry. Um, when planning accessible entryways, the most important consideration is size. Specifically, the width of a doorway opening should be at least 32 inches to allow for a wheelchair to pass through and the height at least 80 inches. When the measurement is just an inch or so too small, swing clear hinges can provide the needed space. These hinges actually make the door opening as wide as possible by swinging the door completely clear of the opening. See page 28, 29 of the Home Fit Guide for more specifications. Not every home has a large formal foyer, but most homes have some sort of transition space right inside the entry door. That space should be free of clutter and provide storage for things carried or worn. Natural light and open spaces also prevent trips and falls and allow occupants ease of movement in the space. Now, next slide, please. <laughs> the entryway, doorbells and handles. This talks about peepholes and doorbells, video doorbells, which are smart, it's a smart home option, handles and locks, can be either lever style door handles or digital door locks, and that's also a smart home option. You can use lever style handles, which are easier than doorknobs. A higher tech solution for an entryway lock is a digital door lock. It eliminates having to find or fumble with the door key. A battery powered or hardwired digital door lock can be opened by using a code or a fingerprint. Some devices also work with a key while others provide a way to lock and unlock a door via a smartphone app or remote control. Now I can attest to this because I've had both. I've had the, um, the door lock where you use your fingerprint, but I now have the one where it's the combination uh, door lock and both of those can be activated and I can open and close my doors and lock my doors from the app on my iPhone. So um, it has been very convenient for me. And since I live by myself, it makes me feel very secure. Next, um, next slide, please. Entry spaces, creating a warm and safe welcome. Next slide, please. On this slide of entry spaces and organizational strategies, there are some green stars which means that these are quick fixes for useful furniture, convenient storage options, and alternatives to a hall closet. Choosing the correct furniture for your space is an important part of modifying your entry space. You could consider equipping the space with a slim desk, table, or even with wall-mounted shelving to store like your keys, your car keys, the wallet, uh, shopping totes, and other commonly used items can be in an easy to access location. Also consider adding storage containers to organize your mail 
and your coupon and your devices like your phone or garage door openers, this can be a quick fix. Adding a bench to the space provides a location to put on and remove shoes safely. Shoe and slipper storage, whether it's either under a bench or located elsewhere, helps to prevent trips and falls. It keeps a foyer free of dirt, puddles, and keeps the space looking tidy. So this is also something that's a quick fix. Finally, if there's no closet in the foyer of your home, consider adding wall hooks for coats, hats, and purses. Next slide, please. The kitchen. Considerations for every diner, visitor, and cook. Even the most welcoming kitchen has its hazards with fires, spills, slips, trips, and drops that can cause injuries and home damage. You can purchase a lightweight ABC rated countertop fire extinguisher from Walmart for under $15. Home fitting interventions can make the kitchen safer and easier to use. And the part about the the fire extinguishers, that was my little input because I was in Walmart and I saw them there and they are so cute. They're about the size of a regular spray can. You could put it right on your counter. It's lightweight. Something happens and you got it right there and you can use it. So it's a good safety feature. I recommend it for everybody. Next slide, please. The kitchen, rethinking your current space to sit at the table to prepare food, or to work at a lower counter. Modifying your current spaces so you don't have to redo the entire kitchen is a cost-effective way to extend the lifespan of your kitchen design to accommodate your changing desire or need to cook in the future. Next slide, please. The kitchen, cabinets, shelving, and drawers. And this has a green star which means that it's a quick fix for adjustable lighting for easy to use. Lower level cabinetry and pull out shelves for better access, open shelving for visibility, and drawers for maximizing space. Some quicker fixes for the kitchen include reorienting adjustable lighting and adding stick-on under cabinet lighting to shine more light on commonly used workspaces like the sink and the stove. Modifications that require the help of a professional include things like cabinet changes. Since frequently used items are best stored between the hip and the shoulder height, adding lower level cabinets with pull-out shelves and extra shelving for storing items of different heights makes them easier for people to access and provides a secure level workspace. An inexpensive fix for me um, in this arena was I bought some stick-on lights to put under my cabinets so that I could um, easily find my pots and pans. I could see them and find them. So that was a simple, inexpensive, easy fix that um, you can do. Next slide, please. The kitchen, handles and hardware. The most accessible handle design, the faucet types that facilitate use and safety. Handles and hardware can be relatively easy to modify, but may require the help of a professional in some instances. First, consider the handles on your existing cabinets. D-shaped handles and draw pulls like the ones pictured are easier to grasp than knobs. Lever style, lightweight, light touch, or sensor faucets are both easier to use and are more sanitary than the ones with the turn style knobs and handles. Next slide, please. The kitchen, appliances. Oh, this is a biggie. When considering appliances, there are many options with helpful features to be mindful of when considering safety and convenience. Placing the microwave above the oven can be dangerous. Lifting and lowering heavy and often hot cookware is difficult and can result in spills or injuries. A countertop microwave oven or one built in at that height is safer and easier to access. When thinking about stoves, consider those models that have the controls at the front of the unit to save users from having to reach over hot burners and pots. Also, colored or backlit controls on a stove are easier to read and use controls that can be locked 
or covered. The top oven and a double oven range can be used to prepare small meals and the height is helpful if bending and lifting is difficult. Drawer style appliances such as the pictured refrigerator, range, and double drawer 27 inch dishwasher are more expensive than single door swing models. However, the ease of use and energy savings can be worth the cost. A French door refrigerator opens in the middle, which makes it easier to see and reach what's inside. Next slide, please. The bathroom, creating a safe and convenient space. Water on a bathroom floor is a slipping hazard and often an invisible one. Falling in a bathroom is painful and potentially life-threatening because of the many hard surfaces. Next slide. The bathroom low-cost safety devices include commode chairs, shower options, comfort height toilets, and toilet base risers, and transfer benches. Other bathroom safety considerations are rubber bat, rugs, or rubber carpet mesh comfort height toilets, or a toilet seat riser. A commode chair is the least expensive option for helping someone get on and off the toilet. Non-skid shower tub mats, handheld shower heads, shower seat or bench for bathing, and all knobs should be lever style handles versus knobs and turn handles. Zero step entry is accessible for all, including wheelchair users and others with disability and anyone who needs another person's assistance. Zero shower inserts are available from big box stores and similarly suitable options include full swing shower doors or the use of a shower curtain or partial wall to cover the opening. Next slide, please. The bathroom, grab or assist bars. We've all experienced sliding on a wet, slippery floor, and that's why we want to ensure that the bathroom includes a grab or assist bar for someone to hold onto when they feel unstable. There are high quality grab bars that are integrated into common bathroom features such as your toilet paper roll holders and your soap dishes, such as others and such as others shown here. The correct installation of grab or assist bars is vitally important for safety. They should be installed into supportive blocking, which is best done by a professional. If they are not secured correctly, they can pull away from the wall when someone puts their full weight on them. So keep in mind, there are unsafe products sold as grab or assist bars, but use a clamp or a suction cup to secure them to the wall or tub. These should not be used. Research has indicated that grab or assist bars are safest when they are horizontal to the floor rather than vertical or diagonal. Next slide, please. Living spaces, incorporating modern conveniences and universal design. And think, think about the time that you had a lot of family over to your home gathered in your living room Depending on how your space is set up, there may be many things that you need to watch out for. Small children sometimes knock into the edges of furniture or trip over electrical cords or pull on draperies or window blinds. Family with mobility issues might not fit between the couch and the coffee table, or they may not be able to get out of a low chair. And I have a personal experience here with this. Um, I took care of my granddad as, um, was mentioned earlier for about 23 years. And he had to have both his legs amputated and um, had put him in a nursing home. Tore my heart, but I had to because he had to then be in a wheelchair and my home is not wheelchair accessible. So he never really got to spend any time in my home. But the last Christmas of his life, which he passed at 105, we went to the nursing home and I got some people to get him into a car and we had to lift him over the stairwell. Sorry, getting emotional. And he was able for the first time to come into my home. 
He was confined to one room because he couldn't get through the hallways, but at least for that one Christmas, we had him with us until he passed. So um, having accessible space in your home is really important. So I'm sorry. Whew. Okay, next slide, please. Living space, safety considerations. A few common fixes are always anchor tall furnishings to the wall to prevent tipping. Secure exposed cords to the floor by using an electrical cord approved adhesive for co or covering. Check the cord regularly to ensure there's no fraying or breakage. This is a quick fix. Provide about two feet of clear space between a coffee table or ottoman and the couch so people have room to maneuver while sitting down and getting up. Avoid furniture with sharp corners and always secure window treatment cords to prevent entanglement. Secure area rugs to the floor with non-slip mats or double-sided tape. This is a quick fix. These changes are good for everyone, not just visitors. Be sure smoke and carbon monoxide detectors are installed on every floor and can be heard in all bedrooms. And you notice that this slide has some green stars that indicates quick fixes. Next slide, please. Living spaces, lighting and electrical. This one also has some green stars that show quick fixes for using natural light, night lights and motion sensor lighting, rocker style switches and ideal switch placement, glow in the dark light switches and wall sconces in the bedroom. Most of these changes, but not all, would need to be completed by a professional. One easier thing to do is use natural light during the day by opening your blinds and curtains to brighten the room. Another quick fix is using a plug-in night light in unused outlets throughout the home battery operated dust to dawn or motion sensor light night lights in the hallway and near steps and staircases are also simple safety solutions that can be a quick fix. Also consider switches near the doorways of living spaces that turn on ceiling fixtures and, and, I, um, and that need so that occupants do not need to enter a darkened room. Stairway and hallway lights need to have on and off switches at both ends of the hall and at the top and bottom of the stairs. Light switches that glow in the dark are especially helpful in these areas. Have flashlights at the ready in multiple rooms in case of power failure and have a phone nearby in case you need to call someone in case of an emergency. That's something else that I put in there because I have my flashlight that sits right next to my chair in the living room and I have a flashlight right next to my bed so that if there's a power failure, I don't have to worry about getting up and slipping, falling, can't see. I have it right there at the ready and I think that that's a good option for all. Next screen, please. Living spaces, dining areas talks about furnishing recommendations and safety and convenience. So dining areas aren't always traditional and formal spaces that they used to be. As a result, many rooms are now dining areas. Wherever you dine, consider comfort and utility. Dining table chairs with armrests provide support for getting into and up from the seat. When a kitchen island or countertop serves as a spot for eating, select seating chairs that sturdy and are safe. Choose seats that are appropriate height with seat backs and armrests and widely spaced legs. When using the living room to dine, <laughs> oh, use lightweight serving trays to transport plates, drinks, and utensils instead of carrying each item by hand. Trays are also available to attach to wheelchairs and walkers. Next slide, please. Living spaces, hallways and stairways. There are some green stars on this slide which indicate quick fixes for clearances, handrails, carpeting, motion sensor light, night lights, treads, runners, 
and riser covers. So furniture in a hallway should maintain at least 36 inches of passing space so people can use the corridor without knocking into or being, or being blocked by furnishings. Stairways need to be well lit, both at the top and the bottom, and have railings on both sides. One easy quick fix idea is to install motion sensor nightlights. The safest surface and coverings for steps is a tightly woven low pile carpet with thin padding. Secure carpet runners with permanent tacking if stairs are uncarpeted, always make sure they have a non-slip surface such as adhesive strips or a securely placed rubber tread. These are some quick fixes with an open um, that can be done. And if stairs have an open back, they should have riser covers. Next slide, please. Living spaces and stair lifts an alternative solution to two-story dwelling. When single-story living is needed but not possible, a stair chairlift can be a practical and safe mobility solution. Stair chairlifts should be installed by a professional. Stair chairlifts aren't inexpensive, but they can be a better and more affordable choice than relocating. There are a variety of types and options. The cost will increase if you require a custom chairlift or if your stairs are curved. But remember, that stair chairlift can be purchased used, which greatly reduces the price. Next slide, please. The laundry room, adaptations and best practices. And here we also have a green star, which indicates a quick fix. Quick fixes for the laundry space include investing in a laundry basket with wheels or using a foldable shopping cart. These items are also ideally suited to apartment or condo buildings or where the laundry machines are located outside of the home. When purchasing a new washer or dryer, consider the style options and which door placement, whether it be top or front, will be easiest to use. Stacked units save space, but can be difficult for some users to reach especially if bending to load or empty a front load washer or dryer is difficult. The units can be placed on a platform if need be. Finally, there are washer dryer combos available. This is a washer and dryer combo in a single washer sized unit containing a front loading washer as well as a condenser dryer, but you should probably consult with an appliance consultant or specialist about the best option for you and your home. Next slide, please. So our challenge to you, choose two quick fixes that you can tackle in the next three months. In the beginning, you remember we, I mentioned that our goal today is to help you identify at least one or two quick fixes that you can take on right away to make your home a better fit for you within the next three months or so. So this is our challenge to you to see what you can get accomplished. Next slide, please. And here are some resources to help you get that done. And we have some green stars up there to give you some immediate um, ideas on where to go. The AARP Home Fit Guide, Home Fit AR, AARP Livable Communities, the AARP Foundation has a here to stay, home upkeep for all. And then it talks about some others, but as well as that, AARP has a wealth of information and resources for residents and community leaders. You can visit, in addition to these, aarp.org livable communities, aarp.org dash backslash DIY, for your do-it-yourself projects, aarp.org backslash livable library. That gives you a full list of home fit and livability articles. There's also the no cost, low cost ideas brochure, which offers more tips on lighting, access and reachability, what materials to use and not to use, easy DIY, and when to hire a professional, and also some utility bill cost savers. The Home Fit AR 
which is the iPhone app, uses image recognition to identify design elements and appliances like refrigerators, sinks, and stairs, then employs augmented reality to provide additional information with specific to-dos or fixes to make a home more comfortable and safe. It's available on the Apple App Store. You can take a self-assessment and search a directory for free and low-cost programs and services near you. You can also get tips, checklists, worksheets, and more to help you plan, prioritize, and keep your home maintenance routine on track. And down at the bottom, it talks about the certified aging in place specialist and the occupational therapist. Well, these are professionals that understand the unique needs regarding modifications and common barriers to aging in place. Uh, additional professionals that can also be consulted or provide assistance include remodelers, builders, architects, landscape artists, and durable medical equipment vendors. Next slide, please. Conclusion, remember quick fixes. Complete listing of modifications are on pages 32 and 33 of the Home Fit Guide. And you can order the Home Fit Guide at www.aarp.org backslash home fit. I hope that you have enjoyed today's session and that it has been uh, very helpful and informative and of value to you in a way that aids in keeping your home safe and comfortable for you and your family. This information is also helpful to me as a senior adult, which my 69th birthday is Easter Sunday. <laughs> um, <laughs> so remember that many modifications in this presentation have been labeled as a quick fix, which will still allow you to begin planning your own home modifications. A complete listing of this classification can be found on page 32 and 33 of your home fit guide. You can order, view, and download the free 36-page Home Fit Guide again at aarp.org slash home fit. This presentation will be made available to all participants via email within the week. So it has been my pleasure. And I now turn it over to Mr. James Benner for his Q&A. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lorraine, for providing us this information. It was so, I mean, it was really good, very thorough in depth, a lot of great information for everyone to use. Um, if you haven't had a chance, I've actually you know, went on the webpage here and looked at some of the guides, looked at some of the, the things, the resources that they're offering. They do have some one pagers there, little checklist that you, that you can use, uh, even two page, two page references. Uh, so you may not need the whole, you know, if you don't have the whole 36 page guide, you can start with that checklist, at least start somewhere. Like Lorraine said, there's, there's, I'm sure there's some places in your home or you may know someone uh, that uh, needs to make some modifications to their home so that they can remain in their home safely and, and as long as possible. So this has been tremendous amount of information that AARP has provided for us. Um, do we have any questions uh, for Lorraine, uh, for the group? If so, um, James, if you don't mind, um, it's not a question, but I do feel like I really need to say this. Um, Lorraine is a volunteer, and we've got um, a few volunteers on the call, Dan Garvin in Greenville. Um, we've also got Genevieve Brown, who's our chapter president in Anderson. And at AARP, we're a very small staff of eight. And a lot of the work that we get done is because of our volunteers. And Lorraine can attest, she worked this like a full-time job <laughs> this week. <laughs> um, so I just want to say thank you um, to everybody that's here that represents AARP out in the community because without them, we couldn't do this work. Yes, thank, thank you uh, for AARP, for all the volunteers. I know it's hard to get volunteers to do things, but then you have, it sounds like you have a good core group of uh, folks there that are really working hard to ensure uh, the safety of seniors in our community. Um, I, and I actually went on the 
going back to the resources that she popped up on her page, the app, I went ahead and downloaded the app. It's actually kind of cool if you had a chance to do that. Um, download that, that HomeFit app. It actually takes pictures of your home and starts to analyze whether or not <laughs> better. So it's, it sounds, sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. We do have one question, Miss Miss Carol. You have a question? Yes, I do. Um, I have been looking under apartments.com under seniors for uh, a, a apartment for my mother that might have an ADA bathroom. Um, can't find anything. In their mind, uh, they feel um, confident that listing their one first floor apartment is a disability apartment, which as you and I know, even though you're on the first floor, that does not make for disability apartment. So I, I, I'm very confused. I feel like nobody is um, analyzing the information appropriately and putting it on the website so that you can easily find an apartment. So my mother's 95 high risk, broken both hips, osteoporosis, and she cannot climb into a bathtub to take a shower. So I'm looking for help here. Um, there's no other place that I know of to look under apartments.com except for senior. Have you, have you narrowed your focus to those apartments that are 55 and older? It's an under a category called seniors. So yes, I have, I think. Uh, I would go to any apartment, it didn't matter. But if they say they have a disability apartment, it just means it's a first floor and it has maybe some handrails. That's not, that, that's false advertising it is part of what I'm getting at. I'm wasting a lot of time driving around to places where you have to climb into a bathtub to get a shower. Does anyone have any, any input on that? If not, we can um, we can do some research and get back to you, Ms. Larson, to see I if would. any of our resources could help you out. I would appreciate that. Yes, I would. Um, you have my email address? I do. I've made a little note next to your name on my registration list. Okay. And yeah. Ollie, has, Ollie has my phone number because I'm really bad on the internet. All right, I, I see that. I do have your phone number too. We have a, uh, several people from Ollie today. So thanks for joining us. We appreciate you coming. Thank you. I was looking for some good information. You had a lot of good information here. Thank you for the presentation. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Larson, for your question. We'll, we'll give, we we'll surely do some research to get back to you. Is there anyone else that have any comments or any, any questions at all for the group? I do see a note from Janet Jariet Norris that um, contacting the human relations, I'm the chat went away, human relations commission with Greenville County. Well, so we'll look at that. I had a, I had a bunch of questions written. Oh, sorry, Ms. Brown. Okay, I think one of the things she may, we may want to do is pass this information on to the home builders uh, she's absolutely correct. They consider the first floor as handicap accessible and it's not. And uh, unless you find an institution that is currently built according to the guideline codes of today, you're not going to find it. But it's, I think it is ample time for us to place that issue up front. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown, for your comment. Anyone else? Okay, Justine, I think I'm, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I didn't know if you have any announcements or anything from Tenant at the Top. Thank you. I did have a bunch of questions that I wrote down, but then Lorraine answered all of them. So <laughs> here we go. Thank you so much, Lorraine and Cherie. That was really informative and so good. I just wanted to mention to everyone that we have compiled a local list of organizations that can help with home repairs. And I will send that to everyone after the meeting along with a recap. Um, 
of course, uh, V has provided Better Business, Better Business Bureau of the Upstate's um, website there. And so there's all kinds of resources for different services on that. And then the rest of the list is organizations that might be able to help with um, home repairs. So I just wanted to also mention that 10 at the top, we have our, we have a chat chat coming up tomorrow. Everyone is welcome to attend. I'm going to put a link in the chat to our events page. Um, we're doing those every other week. And like I said, everyone's welcome to attend. We have a health representative who will be giving an update and some other events that people might be interested in. So unless we have anything else, we will, we will adjourn. Thank you so much. Thank you all for attending. If there's one thing we've learned today is that we do, there are a lot of resources out there, but we, you can never start too early in planning for uh, the future. So uh, start now, um, tell all those you know, especially those seniors uh, to um, start planning now. Wait, I do see some hands that's, that's going up. Miss Baxter, do you have a question? I have a question. Can she tell us something about specifically what the health topic is tomorrow? Oh, Dean's here. Dean, can you tell us what Dr. Scarps, we're not sure if we're saying her name right. Mm -hmm. Yes, Peggy, it is uh, a representative of Dr. Sicasio from uh, Prisma Health. Um, and she's going to give kind of an overview of where things are with the vaccines. With and COVID, okay. <laughs> things related to COVID. We also have uh, someone from uh, Spartanburg Regional and AnMed who will also give updates on what's going on in Anderson and then the, the Spartanburg, greater Spartanburg area health-wise too. So it's really more of a, a general COVID and, and other general health uh, kind of update. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Baxter. If there's nothing else to uh, claim my attention, again, I want to thank everyone for participating and uh, it's approaching right in the hour, so we certainly don't want to uh, take up too much more time. But again, thank you all for, for coming and hopefully you will uh, register for our next event, which will be coming soon. I'm not sure if it's going to be virtual or in person, but either way. We certainly hope that you will take the time out to come out and learn more about the senior issues that are surrounding our community, okay? Well, there's nothing else to, to, to discuss. Thank you all again for participating and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. You, you too. too.